the Linvitec Traction Tower device designed in conjunction with Terry L. Whipple, MD, facilitates wrist, hand, and forearm surgery by providing a freestanding and sterile means of positioning a patient. To make autoclave sterilization of the traction tower effective and easier, disassembly of the traction tower is required. To organize the components of the traction tower, an optional sterilization tray is available. Since the traction tower has significant mass and can retain heat, it must be allowed to cool prior to contacting the patient. Assembly of the sterilized components begins with a base plate. Next, the primary support is inserted and twisted clockwise. To lock the primary support into place, the locking pin on the back side of the primary support is engaged. Next, the sections of this ball joint assembly are connected and added to the primary support. The ball joint assembly is locked into place using the lower macro adjustment pin on the back side of the primary support. A pin within the central cavity of the ball joint assembly provides proper orientation of the traction post. Next, the traction post is inserted into the ball joint assembly. The scale mount is locked into place using the upper macro adjustment pin. With the scale mount in place, the traction tower scale is attached to one of three scale locations. The last step of the traction tower assembly is the attachment of sterile Linvitec digitraps. Linvitec digitraps are made of atraumatic nylon material providing skin contact over a greater surface area in comparison to standard finger traps. The ball and chain aspect of each digitrap is attached to the slots of the traction scale. Additional components include a radial ulnar deviation pin which is inserted into one of two locations in the primary support an X-ray cassette bracket, which also can be attached to the primary support, and three patient positioning straps for wrist, forearm, and upper arm stabilization. Proper setup of the traction tower requires the use of a draped arm board or hand table. The patient is placed in a supine position with the operative arm placed on the hand table. The tourniquet cuff is put into place. An egg crate foam is used to cover the tourniquet cuff. The upper arm strap is then draped over the foam padding. The strap is passed under the hand table and tightened, supplying a source of counter traction. The strap is not over tightened and allows at least 90 degrees of elbow flexion. Next, after routine preparation, a stockinette is applied to the operative arm. The extremity drape is then passed over the arm. A fold is placed in the drape and is tucked under the elbow. The remainder of the drape is extended over the hand table, providing a flat, neat, sterile feel. The distal end of the stockinette is cut, then folded back and secured with a self-adherent wrap. The traction tower base plate and primary support, which has been sterilized and allowed to cool, is then brought into the sterile field and placed under the operative elbow within the fold of the extremity. For dorsal procedures, such as wrist arthroscopy, the volar aspect of the forearm is rested against the primary support and is stabilized using the forearm strap. An indent in the primary support accommodates the bulk of the forearm muscles. Alternatively, attachment of the dorsal aspect of the forearm to the primary support will accommodate procedures requiring a volar approach. Through the use of the lower macro adjustment, the ball joint is positioned immediately opposite the patient's palm. The traction scale is then added to the most appropriate scale mount indent. Next, the digitraps are attached. The digitraps should extend beyond the proximal interphalangeal joints to prevent slippage. The distal aspect of the digitrap chain has a universal hook for use with other traction systems. When digitraps are used with a traction tower, the hooks are not needed and can be removed. The upper macro adjustment pin is used to obtain initial distraction. Additional distraction is applied by using the micro adjustment knob attached to the traction rod. 
clockwise rotation of the micro adjustment knob increases distraction which is displayed in pounds on the traction scale. Rarely is over 10 pounds of traction force required. Normal skin with this amount of force applied to two digits can accommodate this stress without difficulty for two hours. The wrist is stable in a vertical position and several options are available. A wrist strap can be added for additional stability. The ball joint can be loosened with a counterclockwise twist to allow wrist flexion, extension, or radial ulnar deviation. To facilitate radial or ulnar deviation, the radial ulnar deviation pin can be placed in the appropriate cavity of the primary support to counteract the pivotal forces. It's important to note that moving the upper portion of the traction tower to alter wrist flexion, extension, or radial ulnar deviation will affect the traction force being applied. The traction tower can be used to create x-rays of surgical repairs using one of two methods. Either a standard x-ray cassette or C-arm x-ray unit can be used. To attach an x-ray cassette to the traction tower, the traction scale is moved to its most proximal location and the x-ray cassette bracket is attached to the most appropriate slot on the primary support. Next, the x-ray cassette is placed on the x-ray bracket and the x-ray is taken. To utilize the C-arm type x-ray unit, the forearm strap is removed, the ball joint is loosened, and the upper portion of the traction tower is tilted in either a radial or ulnar direction, then fixed. The C-arm is then moved in place and the X-ray is taken. Either method allows X-ray examination of a repair with the wrist in a normal relaxed position. Post-operatively, the traction tower is disassembled and autoclaved with the patient positioning straps. The digitraps are discarded as a single-use item. Outside of the operating room, the use of an optional emergency room bracket will allow the traction tower to be attached to an ER stretcher. As a replacement traction tower base plate, the ER bracket is locked into the stretcher frame and the stretcher rail using the knob on the underside of the bracket. The same method used to attach the traction tower primary support to the traction tower base plate is used to attach the primary support to the ER bracket. With the ER clamp in place and the traction tower attached, the system can be used for a variety of ER procedures including Collie's fracture reduction. The Linvitec Traction Tower Extremity Traction Device provides a safe, sterile and effective means of positioning a patient for wrist, hand or forearm procedures. For more information on these and other Linvitec products, please call us toll free at 1-800-237-0169. Outside the U.S., call 727-392-6464.